Hey there everybody and welcome back to more REM 2. So far we haven't seen a whole lot down here in the cavern that we're exploring, but what has been here has occupied us quite a bit. We've checked out a bunch of contraptions up in this arrival center area. We've encountered a hatch that we couldn't really open, and we looked at a hydroelectric plant that had a bunch of windows that were closed. So let's go down the path that we haven't been to yet, which seems to break off into two. Once again, I'll be systematic and go down the left side. Looks like there's another path here across the way. And another one of these posts here with the three sets of 2x2 two two squares. This time we got the left square highlighted with the numbers 8, 12, 4, and 10. So at this point, all we need is the right square. Let's see what this does. It opened the door in front of us, but it also closed the door in front of it. So it seems like this is some kind of airlock. Alright, I can't really interact with whatever this thing is. But I can press this button and it turns something on, it would seem. But whatever it is, it seems to be through that wall. More than likely, whatever it is, is uh, accessible through this path. But we'll have to check that out whenever we get there. Over here, we've got some sort of door, but we can't open it up. It seems like we have to put something in here to make that happen. We got a portrait of a moon here, though. And it looks like we turned something on on the other side. Now, on the other side of this wall is an area that we actually have been to earlier, and that was the hydroelectric plant. So let's see if it opened up one of those windows that we were looking at earlier. It's worth a shot, at least. Aha! It did open one up. So what does this do? Seems like whenever we press these buttons, a light turns on and a number is displayed that corresponds with the position of the light. And it doesn't seem like there's really any particular um, use for this other than learning the numbers because I can't really press these to make some sort of combination, I can only press them one at a time. So what would exactly would the purpose of this be? Well, let's just make a note of the numbers for now. They are in order, let's see, 2, 8, 4, 6, 1, 9, and 5, 3, 7. In the meantime, though, we've got a whole other fork to check out, so let's go ahead and look at it. Turn left again, and we see another one of these cylindrical things that yet again we can't really interact with. And some sort of ladder, but it leads to a grate that we can't pass. That's a shame. Does this button open the grate up? Okay, the button causes another button to slide down. I gotta admit, the Remians sure know how to make things complicated. But anyway, this allows us to rotate this uh, cylinder here, and that in turn allows us to cross over to the other side. And it looks like there's another button here that also rotates the cylinder. But unlike the other side, this button is round instead of square, which is kind of a little confusing, I gotta admit. Not exactly very good design. Another one of these closed windows. And a passage we can look into, but we can't really get to it from here. Let's so, see what we got. We've got another door, but it's locked. Well, whatever this is, it seems to include a bunch of pins, and those pins go into pipes. 
that are connected to some sort of combination lock, it would seem. Well, I doubt that's the combination. Yep. It was worth a shot, though, but we're going to need more information, such as what these pins represent. Nothing over there. Or there. But I can see another one of those posts, so let's check that out once we get to the end. Let's see, on this side we've got nothing, and oh, what do we hear? More pins. Okay, these ones don't wrap around to the other side, instead they go right through the wall. And one of these things has some sort of E, or number 3, or something. Interesting. Well, we were wondering if the pins corresponded to numbers. So maybe we need to find more of these things, because this alone doesn't really tell us what all the other numbers are, since it just seems to have, well, these seem to be just two pins. I guess if this counts as a pin. I don't know, we're going to need more information than this. Here's the final set of numbers for the three squares. We got 6, 11, 1, and 7. And once again, we've got another combination lock. We don't really know what it is, so this is kind of a moot point. And right here, we've got some kind of wheel that we can rotate around, and it's got a bunch of peace signs or something. Yeah. Well, rotating it around doesn't really seem to do anything except just give us different vantage points that we can look at it from. Well, not vantage points, but you know what I mean. Well, there's nothing more we can really do here, so I guess our only option is just to check out that rotating cylinder and see where it leads. Thankfully, there is no grate on this side, so we can go ahead and access the top floor. Looks like we activated something. Hopefully we'll find out later. I guess if we ever see more walls like this yellow stuff, we'll know what it is. Although, come to think of it, this yellow stuff is kind of everywhere. Hmm. I got an idea. It looks like that button that we used to rotate the room from the bottom can slide back up. So, if I were to go back to the other side... Send the button back upstairs. And then control this from this side. We should be in business. Because I want to see what happens if I rotate the cylinder from up top. Aha! There's some kind of hatch here. But we can't open it through this hole because this hole is not big enough. This hole, however, seems to fit the bill. So let's try that. There we go. And it looks like we got the bottom half of a piece of paper. It says number 4 is 10 o'clock, number 5, 2 o'clock, and number 6 is 5 o'clock. Hmm. Where could this be useful? Well, come to think of it, we know of a place where this can be found, um, or this can be used, rather. The clock um, hatch toward the starting point had 12 buttons, and it had six buttons that could be pressed at any given time before the buzzer sounded. So it looks like we got half of the combination here. We just need to find the first half. Now, when we came up here, we exited through this hole, because this hole was the one that was closed off to us when we tried to climb up the first time. But we haven't seen what awaits us on this side, so let's climb down this ladder and check out the other side. We got some kind of treasure chest here. And we can use these buttons to specify which of these lights is lit up. 
Now we've seen this before, we've seen these symbols on that rotating wheel outside, and each of them had an arrow coming out of it. Now what you're supposed to figure out here is which of the ends of these things has the arrow, and sometimes you have to rotate them around such that they're oriented exactly like this, which is what the button on the rotating wheel is for. Now, I'm not going to go back and put you guys through the pain of having to look at that again, so I'll just go ahead and point out which ones had the arrows coming out of them. Here, it's this spot, kind of the 10 to 11 o'clock position. For this one, it's the 3 o'clock spot, and for this one, it's actually the 9 o'clock spot. So what treasures does the chest offer? Uh, what are these? They kind of look like numbers, but how does that help? Well, actually, we need something number related. And what you really need to figure out here is, once again, you can rotate things in this game. Which it took me a while to figure out here, like it did with the moon thing. Now when we rotate these, we can see that there are little holes on the back. And of course, we know of a place where we need to use things with holes. Those pin things that were on the backs of the combination locks, or at least connected to the combination locks. Now this kind of looks like a 7, because it has the line through it, even though it's not exactly very obvious. Now of course, we're looking at these from the reverse. So when we actually go back over there, we're going to need to mirror each of these uh, settings here. Or the hole placements, rather. So let's take a nice long look at each of these. Two has the holes on the top and bottom in the middle. Five has them here and there. Let's see, this appears to be an 8. And 8, strangely enough, has the holes in the exact same spots as 2. This looks like a 1. Alright. And this is a 9. Okay, those are pretty close together, so that's pretty easy to remember. Number 6... And these are all on what would be the left side when we actually see the pins. And finally, we get a number that doesn't really look like a number. But we've been through everything except 3 and 4, and the number 3 was left back at the pin area, so this has to be the number 4. Alright, hope you guys memorized all that, because we're going to need to remember it when we go back. Okay, in all seriousness, I've actually got notes for the entire game here in front of me, so we should be good to go. And what in the world is this? Well, whatever it is, it seems to be a combination lock with the word Gwalim Wazoo. Now, I have no idea what kind of language that is. And we haven't really heard anybody around here speak anything other than English. But we have seen these various symbols before. Well, at least most of them. Remember back in the Arrival Center, we looked at the backs of the moon pictures, and they had Gua, Lim, and Su, at least, among the various syllables that we were looking at. So how exactly are we supposed to translate these into numbers? Well, remember on the uh, front of the moon pictures, the moon was placed at various compass points, or at least uh, in positions that could be identified by compass points. Where exactly have we seen something that can convert that into numbers? Well, back in the hydroelectric plant area, we had that spot where we pressed the buttons that shone a light in various spaces along a 3x3 three three grid, and each of those spaces had a number that corresponded with them. And each of the spaces also had a syllable that corresponded with them in the moon pictures. So all we need to do is just make the connection for each of these syllables. So Gua is the northeast spot, which is 4. Lim is just 1, so I'm just going to leave that be. Now West we have not seen yet. 
and we noticed that we were missing a west moon picture. So the number that is associated with Wes is 6, which leaves Sue, which has to be 5 since it was in the southwest position. Now you might remember that there was a picture with no moon back at the arrival center that had the uh, word me, or the syllable me, right next to it. And I guess we're just going to have to assume that that corresponds with zero. Alright, we got a blue piece. Now, this doesn't really seem like a piece of the key that would go with this. It seems to be a part of something else. So we're just going to have to keep that in mind. And it looks like this is the window that we were looking through earlier when we were on the pathway that led into the combination locks. Anything down here? I hear something. Aha! A lava room. What does this do? Okay, this lowers some sort of crane or some kind of thing, claw thing in there. And right now, we've actually got two different measurements being displayed on here. We've got that kind of bowl-shaped thing we saw earlier on the thermometer, and I guess this is supposed to measure the lava temperature, and we've got this horseshoe thing that was supposed to measure distance that we saw in the ruler, both of which in, were in the arrival center. Now, of course we don't really know exactly what we're doing here, so let's retract this back up. We need more information before we play around with that. Looks like that's all there really is to see here. Oh. Someone's here. Guys, we are not alone. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and end the video. Oops, let's turn this on. There we go. I'm going to end the video right now. We've got lots of stuff done here. And in the next video, we can continue exploring this underground area here, because we've got a rotation button to play with. If you enjoyed yourself today, be sure to hit that like button, and I will see you on the flip side. Once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time.